Okay, I hope this is recording. I'm using my iPhone for the first time to make a video. And this is my first oh, art video or whatever you want to call it. This is a what's in my pencil box video. And what I have here is a Kipling uh, pencil box or it's, it's also sold as a makeup kit. Um, comes with a cute little gorilla. Some people don't like the gorillas. They think they're weird. And then this thing was made by a good friend of mine for my journal. And I put it on here. The zipper is pretty high quality. I think I got this on eBay, but it might have been Amazon. So opening it up, I have an assortment of Prismacolors. Um, and I try to stick with the basic colors, green, blue, red, yellow, yellow ochre, and some flesh tones, and then white and black, and a blender. And this is a good time to point out that there are actually, uh, there are blenders and there are burnishers for, these are Derwent here. This is a burnisher and this is a blender and they act in completely different ways. This kind of polishes finishes the uh, the color and this blends it together uh, about these prisma colors I I actually my my set of colored pencils is this uh, Faber Castell set of polychromos 120 colors because uh, a lot of people swear by Prismacolors, but apparently when Sanford acquired the company, the quality went downhill and they get a lot of uh, wax bloom now. So some of mine, you will notice, are Eagle brand. I don't know whether you can see that or not, but it's Eagle. These are vintage, they're antiques. You can't get these anymore unless you get from somebody who's like, you know, <laughs> has hoarded them or something. I've had some of these pencils for easily, oh, 40 years, something like that. Um, this is another Eagle. Uh, this one, this one. But uh, I haven't really worked with them a whole lot to compare with the Polychromos, but I'm gonna do that. There's a video by uh, Southpaw Creative Arts where she compares Prismacolors to other pencils, and uh, it's it's pretty informative. If I think about it, I'll put the link down below. But so those are anyway colored pencils, and then here on this side I have my favorite uh, sizes of drawing pencil. I have a clicky pencil, which is for just laying in lines because it's really easy to um, erase. This one. Back before Faber-Castell was Faber-Castell, they were Eberhard Faber. And, or it might be a different country, a company, I don't know, I need to do some research on that. But they make a drawing pencil that is probably, I don't know, a two or three B, something like that. But it's nice and smooth and I have a number of these. I'm not even sure you can get these anymore. I need to go down to Jerry's and see if they still have them. I have like half a dozen, I guess. And then this is made by Derwent. It's a sketching pen that is uh, an HB, but it's called Light Wash. And the fun thing about this is, and I think you can get these in different uh, grades, I'm not sure. But the fun thing is that you can put water on it and work with it whereas with a regular pencil you don't get that so that's a lot of fun <clears throat> then I've got an F an H a 2H a HB a B and a 2B this one is by uh, Koenor Repeatograph. I don't even know when or where I got this. I've had it for so long. It used to be oval. 
Um, I think it actually might have belonged to my ex-husband. I'm not sure. <laughs> and then a 4B, a 5B, and a 6B. These go in range from uh, H, which is pretty hard. You use it for outlining or just lightly sketching. A 2H, and you can get like some fine, to move aside my coffee here, some fine uh, If you're working hair or something like this, but then there's also the 2H, which is really good for that. If you look at Nettie Wakefield's Reverse Portrait series, she uses a 2H a lot. And then an HB fairly standard. I think this is my like my main go-to just drawing pencil. And then a B. And then your quintessential, you know, you remember fill in the dots on the test. 2B. This is a good one for standard drawing too. This is a 4B, which is a good, dark, soft. And 5. And 6. You can tell I've used this one a lot. But that's, uh, I hope this is in camera. You can see that is pretty uh, heavy duty. And there are actually uh, higher numbers of that. Then I turn this up and I always have a piece of paper in here to wipe my brush on, to test things. Um, some uh, kitchen towels or paper towels. Then of all things, I have another set of pencils. These are fairly inexpensive set that I got at Jerry's. And it's in case you know, whatever. It's uh, all the way again from F, H, uh, two H, H, B, B, two B, three, four, five, six, seven, eight B. Uh, by the time you get up to eight B, you got some major softness going on here. And they actually, I've actually seen a 9B, but it kind of makes me wonder what happened to, uh, let's see, A, C, D, E, you know, all of those. And between F and H, do those pencils exist? Did they exist and people didn't use them, so they did away with them? I don't know. Coffee time. Then, moving on, I have some felt tip markers, the Bic Intensity, which I like a lot, and then the Sharpie, which is virtually the same pen, seems maybe a little smoother, and then Prismacolor. I find the Prismacolor pens last the ink lasts longer than the pit pens um, I've had my Prismacolors for a while in fact I think longer than I had my pit pens and the pit pens dried out then I've got a couple of spare pencils drawing pencils like uh, a 2B let's see what else. I know I've got some extra ones in here let's see oh, that's not a pencil got uh, an extra 6B because you saw how short that other one is. <laughs> and then uh, a 4B. So those are my extra pencils. And then I have just a pencil pencil. Oh my god. Fancy that with an eraser and everything. This is a an HB. 
a 2 HB. Hmm, interesting. Okay, and then, let's see, I have just a plain old ballpoint pen, because you never know. Some people like to draw with the Bic uh, stick pens, or what they call biros in, uh, in England. So you might stick a couple of those in there. Then I have an ultra super cheapy set of watercolor pencils that I got from a friend. We traded a bunch of art supplies. And there's another one of the Prismacolor black pens. And uh, did I get all of these? No. There we go. Watercolor pens are a lot of fun if you're out sketching. Let's get a prettier color here. That's all you need to do is carry these and a water brush. You can also take water uh, paint straight from the uh, pencil as well. Kind of blocking everything there. Sorry about that. So, set those aside. And I have a, like a handy wipe or whatever. I'm not even sure if this one still works anymore. But uh, and as far as erasers go, I've got. That's it. I've got the uh, Faber-Castell Jet Eraser. For just hard, straight erasing. It doesn't work real well once you put water over the pencil. It works a lot better when, because the water kind of sets it. And then I have my kneaded eraser, which I keep in this little mint uh, mint, some kind of mints came in this, mint or gum or whatever. Needed erasers, if you don't know about them, are really cool. You can sit there and play with them, get them nice and soft. You can get them in a point and, you know, like erase little details. And then you just work the uh, graphite, oh crap, graphite into it. And I keep it in here, like I said, to keep it clean because it will pick up hair, pencil shavings, you name it. And then I have a, a spare one. I also have Faber-Castell Dust-Free Vinyl Eraser, which is good for erasing like big areas if you really screw up, like I do sometimes. And yeah, that's it for the erasers. <laughs> Then I have a selection of brush pens. I just added these. I haven't worked with brush pens a whole lot. This is the Copic. It says Copic Gassenfrud Nylon Brush. Made in Japan. All kinds of, yeah, I don't know. Anyway, you can, by varying. And apparently these are good for like lettering if you know how to letter, which I don't. And anybody who can do like kanji or whatever, which again, I can't. Uh, I don't know the brand name of these. These all came, all of these came, I used to belong to a subscription box called Sketchbox. And for like $35 a month, they ship you a bunch of different art things and one box had all of these different, in fact, I've got a couple more over here that came in that same box. Uh, set sketchbox signature brush markers. But I don't keep those in my thing. So anyway, this one is a kind of fine point. And then this one is a little little uh, thicker 
And this one is gray. A dark gray. It's almost a Payne's gray, but it's uh, not quite blue enough. So those are in there. And then these are uh, water soluble. They're by Generals, and they're all surface. They'll write on anything, but the neat thing about them, and they're really kind of fun if you're doing work and want to add, is they're water soluble, and you can kind of spread it out. And the white is too, but you, you wouldn't be able to see it here. A little bit different than the uh, the Derwent light wash pens. <laughs> then let's see, I have charcoal pencils, which are two, four, and six B, and paper stumps, which. Or blending tools and you don't these are cheap buy buy you don't have to buy expensive ones you don't even have to buy them at all you can make your own by ripping paper and rolling it up in a tight little roll but Those are pretty handy to have. Then I have a ruler that I've had forever. Came in like an art kit when I was a kid. This is a thing to smooth out your points on your pencils. Um, you know, sometimes if you if you have a pencil holder that you've got graphite in, you can smooth the you know bring the lead to a point with that. And then I've got. A couple of really good uh, pencil sharpeners. This one is by Statler and made in Germany and this one is by Faber Castell also made in Germany. Um, get yourself good ones okay and here's here's like a difference right here this is a Statler one again uh, same company they're metal. This is a copy of the Statler, Statler one, and it's plastic or really cheap metal. I can't figure out which. Um, but the cheap little dime store ones that you get, don't bother. They're just going to break your pencils. This actually came with a Derwent set and works fairly well, all things. But you, um, where are my pencils? <laughs> But generally you have two holes. Some people think that this one is for getting a, a shallower point on colored pencils. That's fine. I don't know. The one I actually prefer, but I can't carry it in my pencil box, is this one by Faber-Castell. Because it has the one for the Faber-Castell pencils, but it also has the wider point. Um, Derwent pencils won't fit, in, and this is a normal size for just pencils and Prismacolors and things like that. But Derwent won't fit in either one of these, but it'll fit in this one, along with um, like my larger drawing pencils. And then it's really easy to empty. Which I've already done. really like this one. I recommend this. Some people say, oh, use an electric sharpener. And I'm like, no, don't use an electric sharpener. You're just going to grind your pencils down way too far. And they tend to break your points, especially on Prismacolors. Prismacolors just break right and left. So I recommend either one of these or this one. This is about six bucks, six and a half bucks, but it's worth it. 
And then I have another, this Mentos came in this. I have this that with these little things that are actually intended for makeup, but they make great blenders. And a couple more really cheap paper stumps. And then this is a Prismacolor blending stick for colored pencil. This is a Prismacolor white, and it's good for blending or going over with highlights. And this is just graphite right here. And it's a, uh, Six P. So it's pretty heavy duty. And then finally, get all this stuff in here. I have a little Winsor and Newton travel set of watercolors that I've had for probably 35 years. Um, as you can tell, I don't use it a whole lot, but it's really great when you're out and about. And um, these are refillable. You could put, uh, they're not movable. But you can still get these. I saw them, you know, the standard travel Windsor Newton is fairly pricey, but I saw this one like on eBay or something for like, I don't know, $3.99 or something. I don't know where, where they're getting them or if it's an old stock that they're, you know, they don't make them anymore or what. But that is my pencil box. And all of this stuff goes back here in an order, or it won't fit, as you can imagine. So, get all the stuff that's supposed to be in here back in. No, Statler and uh, Faber Castell. You know, I'm not. I don't get paid by anybody. But the thing of it is, is that certain products will stand out after a while and make you go back to them. Uh, I think that's everything. Oh, and these. And yes, it actually, whoops, will close, believe it or not. And whatever you put in yours, I suggest that you, you put the things that you use most often in these loops. Um, so that way they're handy and you don't have to dig through everything. Thanks for watching.